Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday lunch chat. I'm Sarah. I'm the owner of Not Another Hat, an amazing yarn store in Hood River, Oregon. And if you're new here, every Tuesday I go live to catch you up on all the latest goodness. Maybe it's new yarn, maybe it's newly finished projects. <laughs> Um, maybe it's new fun accessories. Who knows? You never know what we might talk about on our Tuesday lunch chat. But the obvious way we're going to start this one is about this. Because I finished my Alyssum. This is from Marie Green's latest book. We had the launch party here at the store, Knitting Light. It is such a fabulous book. So full of very, very wearable designs especially for bodies like mine. I'm a little on the short side, a little on the middle age side. <laughs> so as you can see um, in my Alyssum pullover here, which is kind of a poncho, um, it's really flattering, very comfortable to wear. There's four sizes. I made this size two and I'm like a 40, I usually make like a 46, 48 sweater. So um, lots of, lots of room for every body type. And I used Haiku Riley, um, which I've got a whole bunch right here to show you. So Riley is 50% baby alpaca, 25% mulberry silk, and 25% linen. So what a cool blend, first of all. That's just not a super common blend you find in the yarn industry. But the Knitting Light book, which is on our website, has all plant fiber, um, designs in it. So these are sweaters designed with plant fibers in mind, designed with their drape um, and just everything about it. So um, I tried this on when Marie brought the trunk show here for the book signing. It's swingy. It's comfortable. I knew immediately I had to make it uh, cast it on virtually immediately. Like I think I swatched that next morning. Um, and it was really hard for me to decide on color because there was the obvious gold. I'm always a sucker for gold, but this one, this teal here really was my um, very close runner up. It was a debate back and forth. Ultimately, I went with the silver because I knew it would be so compatible with anything. Um, but I wouldn't rule out having some uh, more in other colors because <laughs> Riley comes in lots of beautiful colors. Look at this. Look at this. There is not a bad one in the bunch. I love this pink too. Kim got this pink for one of, um, hi Kim, <laughs> for a sweater in here. And um, yeah, that is so, such a beautiful color. So check it out. Riley is a light DK heavy sport. It's got 270 yards per 100 grams. So really good yardage. So the book said that I would need five and a half or something skeins. I actually used four and a half skeins. So I came in a whole skein um, short, and which is great. And I, I didn't make any modifications. I knit this because it's knit from tip, uh, uh, sorry, cuff to cuff, tip to tip. Um, I didn't make any modifications. I usually have to make like for body length, etc. because um, it was going in this direction. So I did it exactly as, the only thing I did is I actually did a little bit less of the neck. It called for two inches and I did an inch and a half, but that's because I tried it on at the inch and a half. And I, I like, a, um, a kind of a ballet neck. I call it this kind of wide boat neck. This was exactly where I wanted it. So I decided to bind off there. So check that out. It's the Alyssa Poncho. It's in knitting light. We've got both the book and the yarn, which is Haiku Riley all on the website. So um, I'm in love with this. So if you remember, if you were tuning in before, I also immediately, <laughs> like four days into knitting this, I cast on the poppy dotted tee, which Julia is also making. And I am cruising up the um, back. I've got the front done. So I'm hoping I'll have that done in the next two weeks because I'd love to take both of these pieces with me to Chicago for our trade show at the beginning of May. So It's always a good day when you get something off the blocking mat, right? And can wear it and show it off. And when you take it off the blocking mat and it just fits exactly like you expected and hoped it would. <laughs> so, um, okay, next. 
I know you all know about this already. Just going to give another little reminder, but local yarn store day is coming up this month. Um, it's the last Saturday in April, which is April 27th. And what is local yarn store day? It's a day to celebrate your local yarn store. So we are going to have lots of really fun, special products we're bringing in just for that day. And, um, so will all of my shop owner friends. So you should patron all of us. If you can, we're going to have a special deal where, uh, we're giving away these, this year's enamel pin. We did that we've done that the last couple of years so if you're a collector and you've got the last two years you're going to definitely want to get in on um getting the pin we'll give those out to the first 40 orders and then we also are going to have some really special products i'm not going to give them all away yet but i will talk about them next week so next week no sorry what's today the 16th yeah next week <laughs> this month is flying by so next week's Tuesday chat, I'm going to go over everything we're going to have um, debuting on LYS Day so that you know what you need to wake up for, right? So be sure to tune in on Tuesday or catch the replay and see all the special stuff. And then we will um, have all of that go live on Saturday the 27th. So um, tune in. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so a year ago or more? Let's see. When did this come out? I can't remember. But um, this was a market tote bag that I designed in this really chunky cotton that we had in stock. It's got a nice heft to it, a nice weight, and you can really stuff it full because of the mesh fabric. So this bag um, you could also do easily in the Flax and Twine Astrid. So this is a um, cotton braided rope. And it's got 136 yards. The bag actually, as written, takes 150. But what you could do is just not go quite as high or make a shorter handle. Um, or if you really wanted it the same dimensions, you could get two Astrid. But it would be a really great, quick, big needles, quick, quick, quick <laughs> project or gift for somebody um, if you wanted to make up a quick little market bag. So check that out. This is Flax and Twine Astrid. It's a cotton braided rope. Um, and it's considered super bulky because of how kind of hefty it is. It doesn't look as bulky. It's definitely not as bulky as this cotton was, but um, it still knits on the same needles. So you just would have like a slightly more meshy bag, which is really common for like a, um, a farmer's market bag, etc. Okay, should we move on again? I have this whole list. I want to show you everything. <laughs> we just got restocked on all kinds of naughty stitched stoppers. Shh, don't tell. Don't tell. Um, I'm not going to show you the really, truly naughty ones because I don't want my video to get flagged. But here's a couple that I just think are really cool. This one's not naughty at all. It's just beautiful. It says caffeine and kindness. So these are super cute. Um, for all my coffee lovers out there, Naomi. Um, these I love because it describes pretty much everyone in my family. And by my family, I mean like my sister, my parents, especially my Uncle Jess. And this says, I should come with a warning label. <laughs> okay, also really me and my sister too. <laughs> um, these I also love because who doesn't love a cactus? Except it also says, don't be a prick. <laughs> Super fun. Always a good motto, don't you think? Especially in today's world. Don't be a prick. Um, and then there's a lot, a lot, I'm telling you, with the F word on them. So, um, like this one, Little Miss Effing Sunshine. That's me. Don't you know? So, check these out. They are mini and pearl stitch stoppers. They are on our website. And if anything, they'll give you a good chuckle. But I really think you probably all need a little bit um, of these in your knitting life. <laughs> I really love that warning label one. Um, next. Okay. So does anyone want to come and hang out with me at a really fun fall retreat for knitting? Yes, you do? Okay, sweet. The Good Vibes Yarn Tour, which is um, a little side project that I have with my friend Janet, who owns String Theory Yarn Company in Glen Ellen, Illinois, and my friend Cadence, who owns Fuzzy Goat Yarns in Thomasville, Georgia. The three of us have been putting on virtual tours, kind of yarn subscription boxes, since COVID, since we couldn't do anything in real life. 
and it is time for us to take these virtual tours into the real world. And we are doing that by kicking off this fall with a retreat in Thomasville, Georgia. So there's, um, it's a small retreat. It's not going to be overwhelming with a ton of people, but it is going to be one hell of a good time. We are going to see this lovely, lovely town of Thomasville, the home of Fuzzy Goat. We are going to have private shopping events and pop-up shops and a meet and greet with a dyer and delicious food at the local restaurants and see some of the cool sights around Thomasville. And best of all, it's hosted by the three of us. So Definitely check that out. You can find information on goodvibesyarntour.com. Um, it's the Thomasville Knitting Retreat, and we are taking deposits right now, and that will hold your spot with the final payment due in August. So, oh, Michelle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to digress for a minute because my cousin, the aforementioned Uncle Jess's daughter, uh, she just posted, do you know how many times in school I'd get asked if I was related to the Burge boys and I would ask why before answering. So that sums up my family pretty much. Um, yeah, Michelle, I hope that your mom shows this to your dad. <laughs> uh, so back to the retreat. Go check it out. I would love, 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 love to have a knitting getaway with any and all of you. And we can't take everybody, but um, if you think that you're the kind of person that would like to do that and be indulged for a few days, it's October 10th through the 13th, a Thursday through a Sunday. And it's going to be really, really, really fun. I am struggling already with um, anticipation pangs. You know, like when you have small kids and you don't tell them about really fun stuff too far in advance because then you just get asked about it like every two hours. Are we going to Disneyland? Are we going to Disneyland? When do we go to Disneyland? This is that for me right now. Like if there was a way Cadence and Janet could have planned this without actually cluing me in so I didn't have to suffer through the um, anticipation of wanting to be there already, that would have been ideal. But that's not really how group planning works. <laughs> So, uh, anywho, check it out. We want to, we want to party with y'all. Um, okay. I have a new yarn to show you. This is a luxury, yummy, yummy, yummy. This is, um, Truva from Universal Yarns and it's 50 cotton, 50 cashmere. So if you're, if you know about fibers, then you already know this, but if you don't, I'll tell you real quick. Cotton and cashmere sh share a very similar fiber structure. They're both short fibers. And so they blend together really well in a mixture. And so what that allows for is a more affordably priced cashmere yarn since it's half cotton, but it feels entirely like cashmere, if that makes sense, because they, they blend together so well. So Truva has these beautiful marl colorways. This is just three of them. It's kind of a DK weight yarn and it's got 164 yards to 50 grams. Um, it would just make the most beautiful sweater. And as I was going, getting these ready to show you today, I realized it would also make a really gorgeous hazy cowl. Do you remember this one? Um, this came out last fall. God, already that long? Yeah. Okay. This came out last fall. It's one of my designs. It's a cute little bandana cowl and you hold um, a mohair with it and then you don't use the mohair for a couple of stitches that makes these, um, these diagonal lines that stand out. So check this out. I've paired these up. Uh, Truva with the Tosh Silk Cloud that just arrived. So for example, let's see, this color is Aegean here, and then I've paired it up with Cove in the Silk Cloud. Wouldn't, you would just need one of each. It's the same yardage as the Hazy Cotton. So you could do this, or here I've got Medallion, and I've paired it up with Pollen. Beautiful, beautiful. And this one right here is Mandarin, and I've paired it up with Bordeaux. These would all be gorgeous hazy cowl combos. I know a lot of you already have the pattern for the hazy cowl. It's a really quick project and it's a quick gift too if you need a little something to give somebody. And um, it would be perfect, perfect for this. So, um, okay, well that brings me to my last little bit of business and that's a quick one. 
It is Sip and Stitch Week here locally, or even if you're semi-local, you could, you know, find an excuse to drive out here on Thursday evening. Sip and Stitch is going to be here in town this month. It's going to be at the Crush Cider Cafe, and Crush is a lovely, lovely venue. We have our whole own private back room, and Crush has, um, they're known for the cider that they make themselves, but they also serve beer, wine, seltzers, non-alcoholic drinks, all kinds of stuff, and then they have really delicious food on site. Um, tacos and flatbreads and um, just very, very delicious food. So it, it's going to be a wonderful place to have our sip and stitch. So check that out. It's Thursday the 18th from 4 to 6.30 here in town at the Crush Cider Cafe. So I'll be there and Ingrid will be there. And um, oh, and we always have door prizes. So, you know, it's another fun reason to come to sip and stitch and win a prize um, and meet your fellow knitters. So all right. I hope you all have a lovely week this week and I will see you again next Tuesday with a full preview of our LYS Day specials. All right, everybody. Toodaloo.